one, two, three. Welcome to Watch With Me with Sylvie and Kevin of the Muay Thai Bones podcast. We used to do these Watch With Me's where we would sit and watch a golden age fight and usually a fight we had never seen before and geek out over it and just basically to invite people to start reorienting themselves to maybe fights they hadn't seen mm. and to make it more kind of uh, accessible mm. and go watch the watch those we'll link a link to a playlist of those old watch with me yeah, people really like them and have requested that we do more of them but we just have a lot on our plate all the time so it kind of gets pushed incredible amount but this is something special it's something that we kind of have recently d d developed which is We've started, well, I started editing Golden Age fights just from the torso down, basically taking the lower half to uh, one third of the screen of existing Golden Age footage and blowing it up so that you can't really see the strikes from the waist up. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of this is to cut out the, the distractions of whether a strike landed, we get so obsessed with strikes, especially with the hands in the West, that I think the footwork disappears for us. Like mm -hmm. We just don't even notice it. And so this is a fight between Yokumpon, the elbow hunter of 100 stitches, Yokumpon Sechai Pum, and what's his name? Jar Jaron Sok. Jaron Sok, for Lumpini belt, I think 92, 1992, mm -hmm. 91, 92. Uh, it was the, um, this is in the middle of the golden age of Muay Thai. And we're just going to be like watching this and telling you what we see um, and invite you guys to look at this footwork. Yeah. Like this is really extraordinary because Yokum Pan is known as the elbow hunter. Everything is about his elbows and in, in the mentality of people who remember him. Watch his footwork, right? Yes, there are also people I don't know why, who say that Muay Thai doesn't have footwork. It does not have boxing footwork, <laughs> and it does not have MMA footwork, but Muay Thai has its own footwork. If people tell you Muay Thai doesn't have footwork, don't listen to that person. You're about to see some of the most beautiful and footwork. And I will say, this footwork doesn't exist anymore. No. What, you're, what you will see, if you want to understand why Muay Thai is not kickboxing, or other forms of combat sports, this is why, yeah. but this is a large part of the legacy that we're trying to preserve mm. in the great past fighters of the Golden Age. So we're actually going to do a series of these edits for everybody so you guys can watch also. But in this first one, we're going to watch it together and just see what it's like. Geek out. Okay, ready, baby? <laughs> one. All right. So Yokun Pan is in blue and Jaron Sok is in pink. You can already see this little, this lightness. See that little flex in his knee? This little hop so on that kick beautiful, too. So beautiful, so beautiful. These uh, little uh, um, knee shields, like checks that ward off. He has these tiny gallops as he's closing that distance and it's so not rushed and so light on oh, his feet. Oh man, this is the greatest elbow fighter in history. And then he's just walking. Yes. Oh, oh the twist of his foot. You can oh, tell that like fucking hook was Elvis, coming. Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. So beautiful. Now this little, ah, these changes of pace, how relaxed he is. He made John Sock go southpaw for a second. Mm. Interesting. These, this is an edit, so that was, what, the first round maybe? Yeah, round one. So, Yokum Pan, you train with Yokum Pan, he talks a lot about uh, his gallop, which is just like this kind of giddy up. Well, we rhythm. talk about his gallop. Okay. Yeah, but he but teaches, he teaches gallop. this gallop. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a way to close distance and stay ahead of your opponent's escape route, basically. Um, it's a very fast closure of distance that doesn't allow enough time for them to really strike you on the way in. And he does it in like little bursts. Little tiny footwork moments He also it. does it a clear across the ring sometimes. Well, he usually runs full speed then. Yeah. 
Look at oh. his heels come up, like the little like what do you flex in his ankles. You can see actually how much more relaxed he is than John Sock. John Sock will stop. He'll come to a full stop at times in his footwork. Joachim Pond not. He's always just is kind it, of like shifting. Yeah, it's almost like he's been blown by a breeze or mm. something. When I first watched this, it felt like a marionette on strings whose feet barely touched the ground. But you can actually see escape. his push a little bit. Like you can see the pressure in his legs as he starts to press mm -hmm. forward a little bit. Oh, oh you actually uh, can that, see elbows that too. Little check, <laughs> like... That little check. <laughs> that little check. Oh. See, John Sock is trying to make distance. He's trying to create distance going backwards. And he's got this little step, which is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with his step, but it feels like he has, like, um, air bubbles in it. Yeah. There are no air bubbles in Yodkun Pond's footwork. It's this constant. Oy. And the way he switches, which isn't, he's not switching stances. Look at that. He just walks. He, he just walks. And then walked back. Into, a, into the opposite stance or square. And it's just this very, you can feel him on the on the bubble of the fight space, always putting well, talk about presence. what you mean by that, that I know what you're talking about, but the like surface pressure of a bubble. Yeah, and sometimes he's doing it literally with the palms of his hands or something, but there's a fight space between them and he's always kind of on the edge of that. Mm, but never popping it, he's just like yes, he's, pushing it. He's creating pressure and you can see the pressure being created by his footwork. Oh. oh. And, and another element of this is how many times he's just walking. Oh, Look at this little shuffle. Wow. <laughs> this little shuffle. Oh, and that little delicate. He's actually a very gentle man for someone who throws such a, a harsh weapon. Yeah. Like, when would you see someone who's like the elbow hunter of a hunter's stitches? and oh. just be so light. Look at that little switch. Yeah. This isn't actually switching. It's less than switching. It's like when Crudom taught you the whisper step. You agree? Look how light when oh, he's just like bouncing so in place. Oh. And again, Jaron Sock's footwork is fine, but like by comparison, it just feels like heavy. You can feel the degree of freedom that your Kumpan yeah. has. It's a degree of freedom. And this is something that some are... Oh, that was an elbow, you can tell. You can't even see about <laughs> the weight. he's looking at the strikes completely. <laughs> but the elbow comes from the feet. It yes. doesn't come yeah. from the shoulder, from the waist even. And it comes, everything comes from the feet. And that's why we want to watch the feet of Golden Age Legends. Is that, honestly, when I watched Yoakum Pond's fights in normal frame, I didn't think his footwork was much because I was just looking at his elbows all the time and his facial expressions. But when you look, when you just isolate the feet, you can see this relaxation. It's so relaxed. And I was going to say, some art's praised for this relaxed style also where the feet come together and it's like, we call it like standing at a bus stop almost. Mm -hmm. He has the same element of that. Look at his feet together, which is supposedly a sin of... He kind of, Yoko Pan kind of squares up at times, mm. but it's so that he can move. When mm. John Sock squares oh, up, he gets that very still. Cat um, stock, like a very car hot like. Oh, there's oh, that walk through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he stiffens up for a second. He's getting taller yes. for those clinch exchanges. Oh, that, that little swivel. He has lots of swivels, oh. right? And then these little, Karahat does this too, a great legend of the Golden Age. He, he does little uh, side, he changes the angle just a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Very little bit, yeah. Very like literally an inch or two, oh. like shading. Oh. You can Look see at that. how Look it's how like- Look how came off of that how it's a battle over space yes. when you're looking at it like this. You can see who's winning the space war all the time. And you can see that um, Jaron Sok is applying power to the fight space. He is yeah. trying to bully the fight space. Yeah. And that's where you get this weird melty, 
Oh, oh Jesus. So light. I'm going to say, Joachim Pons not known for his footwork. Now he should be. Yeah. Now he should be. It's so beautiful. Look at these. And the way he uses knees as just little pops. Below. Oh. He has little hesitations, too. Yes. Is this is as beautiful as some of Karahat's melty stuff. Oh, go. Oh, look at that. And then the bowing of the knees slightly. Yeah. Oh, and the shuffle and that oh, pirouette, pirouetting on the We talk toe. in my uh, Muay Thai Library patron sessions with Yod Kun Pan, even from the first session, how he hitches a trailer. Yeah. He grabs your neck and you cannot get him off of you. He does this with footwork. Like he is just mm. on him all the time. Like the, uh, it's like there's a bar between them and it just kind of pulls. And then he has these ex quick little ex flurries or explosions of attack, but out of silence. Yeah. Like, look at this. It's, oh man. That's, <laughs> it says reset. Yeah, his little reset. Oh, oh, oh that was a good one. Little switch. Oh. Like in a way, we are obsessed with damage done and strikes landed, but in a way, it doesn't even matter. In a way, if the strikes are landing, they are, but whether they're blocked or not, yes, that does matter in the score. But like you say, it's a fight over space. Yeah. And so a lot of what Thai scoring absorbs is an unconscious awareness of this fight, Yeah. of the fight over space. I'll say he and Karohat both have this ability to, when they are off balance, yes. turn the off balance into balance. A like moment, it's yeah. just there in the um, slow motion highlight. Yokun Pan got pushed back and he went back and did like two bounces and then turned it into a like spring forward. Mm. And then in the next highlight, it was John Sock being pushed back and he kind of like stumbled for a second. Mm. And it's like one looks like off balance and the other looks like some kind of like matrix. Yeah, coming some, back yeah, thing. Yeah, very much so. Oh. He's bouncing that foot nice. Look at him. See how he like squares up and then goes to a side? Yes. Oh, and there a little flurry. Oh, man. He's ahead, but he's not going backwards. He's just allowing the like pull of oh. space. He's pulling drawn sock. Oh. I think Jaronsak also had size on him in this fight. It looks that way just yeah. from the legs. Yeah. So to have this finesse, uh, both knees on the outside of the stance, yeah. which is what you want, to have this kind of finesse movement against a stronger, physically bigger fighter, yeah. it's hard to make yourself impactful. Yeah on these little answering knees oh, that will step around yeah. like a ballet. And he gets up on his toes for all his Look knees. Look at this. Oh, oh this, this is like where four he just, in a row, five, like, six, he just seven. Like a, he just bag work. The kill zone. Work. But look how gentle he is in his feet. Like, oh, man. And now he's like skipping oh. towards him. And that little check, inside check he did with his knee, like knee barred to control the knees. Of, it's uh, amazing to see relentlessness oh. in like dancer feet. Yeah. Instead of in like a yes. striking oh, look barrage. Oh, little, little uh, toe to toe. Yeah. Do, 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 like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> 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 totally. Oh, man. Oh, oh. oh. Those rhythms of those, those, the record scratch. Yeah. Oh, man. This is. See what, how attached he stays to him? Yes. This is what Golden Age fighting is about that doesn't exist really oh. anymore. I love that you can see them fixing shorts even from this. Oh. <laughs> Such an important part. Oh man, there he's getting an uh, onslaught. He escapes out the side of the rope. You can see the tips of his gloves coming down, showing the like yeah. relaxation, dance off time. Oh, it's on his toe oh. all the time. Oh, look at that little, little twist. Uh, he turns his back totally. for a second. He has these dramatic flourishes as a fighter to show that he's in the lead, too. Oh, man. It's beautiful. His, like, spring back is just... And he insists to Sylvie 20 minutes of shadow boxing every day because he practices these rhythms. He practiced them all the time. He's... But you feel it. It's all about yeah, feeling. feeling. You can it. see that he's not thinking yeah. where his feet should go. They just go. Just um, improvisational. These little knee flexes. 
arm up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Take your belt. Oh, there is with his lumpini belt. He held the lumpini and the Raja Domino belt simultaneously. Very That's few fighters year, have ever yeah. have done that. Um, so you can also check him out in the Muay Thai library. Yeah, there's uh, lots of them. Lots of him. Um, what can we say? Uh, we're go we want to put up more of these edits. Um, and there's a satisfaction <laughs> about watching the fight like this with the other with the strikes kind of taken out. Yeah, there we're, is, to me this is exciting. We're excited about this, so watch it with us, and you'll be excited.